He's un unable to join. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Hang tight, everyone. Also, just wanted to make this clear. Some of the conversation that we're having will be on my upcoming podcast. Oh, hey, what's up? All right, there we are. Okay, it's happening. How are you doing? Good to see you again. Nice to see you. We both got uh, beards. Yeah, well, you know, who wants to shave during COVID? <laughs> I know. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining me on this. I really love this book, Mark. You've done such a great job. Another Thanks. very um, interesting and illuminating uh, study. And um, for all of my followers that are just now joining us, uh, it's it's Dr. Mark Hyman, when I was very young, uh, I stumbled across one of his videos um, and him a medical doctor and someone of science and a background. Uh, I very much looked up to his opinions and his absolute fact based knowledge that he's put into his practice. Um, so hopefully, if anything, this will lend a helping hand to you at home with your diets and uh, hopefully elucidate a bit of information from this new book that I highly suggest everybody gets. And on audiobook, I yes. listen to the voice a lot. Um, <laughs> um, the first thing I want to talk about, something you bring up at the beginning of the book and something that is, it feels like a, re a really lofty topic, but it's something really interesting. You talk about symbiotic phytoadaptation. Oh, yeah. Oh, you caught that, didn't you? <laughs> Uh, well, it's this great concept. And by the way, thanks for having me on your Instagram. Um, you know, the, the, the reality is that there is so much medicine and food that can heal us if we know where to look and find it. And that our bodies are lazy and, and borrow from nature all the things that we don't make ourselves to run our bodies. For example, we need vitamin C. And if you don't get vitamin C, you get scurvy. <clears throat> we don't make vitamin C. <clears throat> Most animals make vitamin C, but humans don't. And I think guinea pigs don't. So we need to get it from our diet. <clears throat> and that's a vitamin. So we understand that vitamins are vital to life. And vitamins and minerals we can't live without. We get sick and die. But there's a whole other class of compounds we call phytochemicals, which are plant compounds that are in colorful plant foods, all the reds, yellows, greens, blues, that have powerful properties for healing and benefiting our own biology. And in fact, they, they may actually be essential for health. They may not cause a deficiency disease that's so obvious when you don't have enough of them. But they cause things like heart disease and diabetes and cancer and all the stuff that sort of doesn't seem like it's nutrition related, but it really is. So I'll give you an example. So <clears throat> when I call it what I say symbiotic phytoadaptation, it's this idea that we've evolved, co-evolved with plants using their good medicines to help our bodies stay healthy. Animals do this all the time. They forage. And, I mean, it's interesting, grass-fed meat, if you, if you let these animals forage on wild plants, they, and, and on just on large variety of plants, they'll literally seek out the right foods for them. They'll eat maybe a hundred different species because this one has this mineral, this one has this phytochemical. And they're not consciously thinking about that, but their native, uh, innate intelligence, their nutritional wisdom kicks in. For us, we've lost our nutritional wisdom, but we used to borrow these things from plants. And, and you know, there's a great, incredible example, which is Himalayan tartary buckwheat. It's a compound uh, plant, a plant, which is a, a buckwheat strain from Himalayas. It's grown in really harsh conditions. It's, it's got 132 phytochemicals, some which are never found anywhere else in nature. They're powerfully immune regulating and they can help with things like COVID. But one of the things they do, which is really cool, is that they, they, our bodies, as we age, our white blood cells can kind of get damaged. So we, our bone marrow, which produces our white blood cells, produces a million white blood cells a second. And those stem cells that produce the white blood cells can get injured from bad diet, radiation, toxins, et cetera. And they produce these funky white blood cells that go in our circulation and cause havoc and cause inflammation and heart disease and autoimmune stuff. And then they create something called zombie cells. Now, zombie cells are what they sound like. They're like death. And so it's the aging of our immune system. And these zombie cells stick around. They're hard to get rid of. Really nothing kills them. Turns out that the phytochemicals in this Himalayan tartary buckwheat seem to target and kill these zombie cells. So it's a way of rejuvenating your immune system. Instead of having immunosenescence, which is the aging of your immune system, you can literally rejuvenate your immune system by eating certain compounds that are in this plant. And that's just one example. If you eat sort of you know, broccoli, for example, you, you, or collard greens or kale, those have glucosinolates, which upregulate detoxification in your liver. They help boost this compound called glutathione, 
which is super important. So you don't take glutathione as a supplement, but you eat these foods that help the body actually create this. <clears throat> and, and so we've sort of borrowed from plants all these different chemicals to control inflammation, to optimize our gut microbiome, and to, to create all kinds of wonderful, wonderful benefits in our body that we wouldn't necessarily always think about as essential for life. Yeah, I love that. And thank you. Thank you for all of that. I've, I've been uh, obviously very interested in your principle number 10, um, which is treating sugar like a record. <laughs> yeah. All of my followers and a lot of my closest friends, and uh, you remember, uh, remember Tom Hopper sure. Sure. Um, on the doctor's pharmacy and pharmacy with an F. If uh, anybody's listening, I highly suggest that you uh, subscribe to Mark's podcast. It's incredible information. Um, you, I wanted to talk a little bit about sugar uh, because it's one of the, to me, one of the biggest things in my life that once I removed sugar, and when you talk about what you say that's so interesting, is you, don't, you, be, you give a great takeaway at the end of these chapters, and you have a one, one thing in there that's throw out your splendid... <laughs> I love that you say that. And then it's yeah. not, you know, sugar hides under different names, you know? Yeah. Uh, high fructose corn syrup is one of these things where people feel like, oh, I'm just eating something that's not sugar. Or some things will say sugar-free, but they'll say sucrose on it. You know, it's, there's a lot of hidden sugars in our foods, and a lot of that has to do with government subsidies. It has to do with different things of why that's yeah. happening. Um, yeah. But one of the things I want to talk about is how, what is the, so what is the impact we started to talk about on your podcast and then we, we, we strayed around other things, but the impact of diet on cultural traditions, environmental uh, situations and race, for example, in so there's so many communities right now that it's almost completely prohibitive to obtain uh, whole organic foods. And can we talk yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah, there's a lot of questions there about sugar and about, about the social injustice issues. Uh, somebody named Wolf Nutrition wrote, sugar is required for brain function. Mm. And yes, we were trained that that is true in medical school and nutrition school, but that's actually false. Mm. <laughs> this is really important for people to understand. There is, there is essential amino acids. You need certain amino acids your body can't make, so you need to get it from food. There are certain fats that you cannot make in your body. You need them from food, like omega-3 fats from fish. But there is no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. In fact, the body doesn't need any carbohydrates to run. And, and that's how they actually treated, for example, diabetes back in the 20s. They would just put people on severely carbohydrate-restricted diets with 70% fat. In fact, the brain can run, and all your cells can run, on two fuels. It's like a hybrid car, right? It can run on gasoline or electric. So the gasoline is the carbs, and the electric, clean-burning fuel, is the fat. And so the brain can run on total fat. We don't really need sugar. <clears throat> so yeah, it, sugar should be a recreational drug. It's, it's, it's hidden in everything. And often in, in other countries, they actually put by percent the amount of the ingredient on the label when you read the ingredients. Here we don't. So the, what, the, what the food companies have done, if you have more than half of a gram, no, if, if you have, um, if you have uh, uh, sugar as the main ingredient, you have to list it as the first ingredient. But what they do is they put five different kinds of sugar in a cereal or somewhere, so it's not listed as the main ingredient. So it's all kinds of tricky stuff they do. Uh, as far as the social issues and the you, social... Just a little shoehorn something in there. You have, you have a great <clears throat> book that says, if our ancestors were lucky enough, so we're, we're, we come from this concatenation of our, uh, our ancestors, if they were lucky enough, they raided a beehive for honey or found a path <laughs> a few weeks to the end of summer, now we live in a sea of sugar, which causes our biology, especially our hormones, brain chemistry, and immune system to go haywire. And yeah. I, I, I can't stress this enough to everyone listening, if you can do one thing for yourself right now, it would be to eliminate sugar. And yeah. uh, that, that is a big thing. But then to, to now go into the, um, obviously it's, it's more than just a justice issue. It, it's, it's almost a trickle down from tradition, uh, the, the communal cultural aspect, and the fact that I said before, it's almost prohibitive at this time in certain communities to obtain yeah. food. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of issues packed in there. And I talked about in my last book, Food Fix, about the you know, social and political issues around our food and food system. And I think what, what really is, is going on in this country is that 
certain populations are highly targeted by the food industry, are disproportionately affected. Their communities don't have access to healthy food, whether it's the Native American communities, African American, Hispanic communities. And that's why you're seeing so much more COVID in these populations because they're sitting ducks that COVID hits them and they're already pre-inflamed because of obesity and chronic disease, diabetes. That's what we're seeing. And you're, I mean, you're 16 times more likely to die if you have a chronic disease. <laughs> it's mostly caused by food and processed food. So these communities are really struggling and they're often access issues. There's, there's a real um, lack of, of food swamps where there's horrible food and food deserts where there's not enough good food. And, and the costs are sometimes an issue. But I think, I think it, it's a complicated situation. But the, the truth is that these, these foods are, are really hampering these, these populations' ability to succeed and function. Uh, we know that, that bad food impairs kids' cognitive development. It impairs their health. That, uh, you know, we just, we're just seeing mass amounts of disability and, 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 and dysfunction because these people are, are, are so sick from eating this food. Yeah. The truth is it's so fixable. Uh, and, and there are... Uh, you know, there, there are a lot of good studies that show that actually, if, you, if you're smart about it, you can eat well for less and you can eat real food and you don't have to eat processed and junk food. And you, know, you can take your family out to McDonald's for, for four meals or you can make a roast chicken with potato and like some salad and vegetables at home for less money. Right. right. <clears throat> and it doesn't take that much time. Yeah. And, and honestly, Food Fix, amazing book, just a sideline, amazing book by Mark as well. Um, and to get back to the to the vegan diet, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how you talk about intermittent fasting, uh, parasympathetic nervous system, and how stress um, can affect organ functionality. And kind of I, like right now, I'm I feel like I'm dealing with a gallbladder issue because I started eating a lot of peanut butter. Like oh. a, <laughs> I was like, oh, this healthy, it's healthy, but too much of anything is. Yeah really unhealthy, especially a very fat food like that. Um, and I wanted to ask you, because there's a way to fix everything. There's a way to fix things. There's a way to neutralize or balance things. What would be a good thing to go through uh, for my gallbladder health, like, or for, my, for the functionality of my gallbladder or my stomach or my liver? What are good ways to cleanse the system with something like well, I mean, you know, most people have never actually connected the dots between what they eat and how they feel. <laughs> and they're just like shocked that, oh, you know, they're walking around with all these symptoms. There's gallbladder issues or migraine or post or drip or irritable bowel or muscle aches or headaches or skin issues or, you know, infertility, whatever, whatever it is. <clears throat> and nobody connects the dots between what they're eating and how they feel. And so and nobody's really often done the, the work of taking 10 days or three weeks or however long and just resetting, you know, what is it like to put your body back to its original factory settings? And, and what it is, is people call it an elimination diet. I like to call it an addition diet because you're adding in all the whole real foods that we should be eating and you're taking out all the crap. So you're adding in lots of good quality uh, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds and good fats, olive oil, avocados and so forth. And you're removing all the processed sugar and starch and processed foods and and, um, and even things like gluten and dairy, which are often very inflammatory foods for people, not everybody, but for many. So it's been sort of doing a reset. And uh, I created something called the 10-day reset. It's in the book. But essentially, it gives people the opportunity to re really feel what it feels like to um, connect the dots between what they're eating and how they feel. Mm. Yeah. And uh, to, to bring it back one more time here is I've, I really enjoy that you started out with idea of a vegan diet that incorporates sustainable healthy meats and prioritizing proteins that are that are right for you and not and kind of staying away from overly processed foods yeah. uh, as far as like because um, that was a bespoke decision on your part to create mm. a diet for yourself that does work for anybody yeah. who sort of cherry pick what works for them what's the best way that i could uh, we could all say to, to all my followers right now that may be having, like maybe really struggling at figuring out what works for them. What's the first step that they could take to start recognizing the awareness in their diet um, and really make a, make a noticeable change uh, moving forward? Well, I think uh, the personalization is really key. And I often you know, joke and say, you shouldn't let your ideology trample over your biology. In other words, if you think you should be a vegan, but you feel like crap being a vegan, probably your body's telling you something. Or if you're eating meat and you feel like crap eating meat, then don't do that. So <clears throat> listen to your body is the best thing that I tell people. The, the smartest doctor in the room is your own body. With that, with that said, there's a whole section in the book, uh, one, of the, one of the principles is leveraging personalized nutrition 
uh, which means how do you how do you understand how to personalize your diet? So we do that in functional medicine in my practice, looking at their history. You know, what's your family history? Is there diabetes in your family? Is there obesity in your family? Like, what are you prone to? And then we look at your your biology. You know, what's going on with your blood sugar, your blood pressure, your cholesterol, inflammation, just basic stuff. But we go deeper. We can look at food sensitivity testing. We can look at your active gluten or dairy. We can look at genetics. We can look at at your microbiome and see what's going on in there. So we can tell a lot using different indicators of how to actually personalize your diet. And we can do it, you know, in a very simple way or even, you know, much more sophisticated way. And I think in the future, we'll be able to really drop in and get such deep understanding about what we each need individually. And so you might need more of this nutrient or more of that nutrient or more of this vitamin or that vitamin. And that's coming. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a lot of uh, DNA testing, looking at personalized nutrition and health. That's oh. okay, but it, it overpromises often and under delivers because it allows um, sort of a simplification of the process instead of actually having the, um, you know, the, the, the sort of understanding of what you really should be doing for yourself. You're sort of like, uh, based on your own personal history and so forth, you're just focusing on the genes instead of your actual life and lifestyle. So it's important just to understand that it's got to include all of the sort of lifestyle and your whole medical history to make a, a really good recommendation. Yeah. And you know, honestly, those tests are great, but they are like a cheap, they are a quick workaround to, uh, you know, an easier way, I feel like, to do anything is to start from the bottom up. And mm -hmm. everybody, I, I can't, again, I just want to, I mean, this is not a plug. I'm a fan of uh, Dr. Mark Hyman, uh, but his book is very, very, very important. Um, and you can change your diet at any time that you want uh, for your for your uh, for your health and, uh, and, the, and the whole idea of the book was really to get people a very simple practical set of principles that can guide their life that are not dogmatic that are inclusive not exclusive that get out of all the diet wars and just talk about what you know what is quality because if you focus on quality you don't have to worry about how much you're eating or anything right so whether it's different between himalayan buckwheat flour or white flour they're both flour right whether it's different between a grass-fed steak that's been or you know we've been fed 100 different plants or a feedlot factory cow that's pumped with hormone and antibiotics and fed corn and crappy food they're totally different in terms of the information in those foods right and so how do you in each category if you're having dairy you know should you have the modern dairy that's the holstein cows that are feedlot grown and that are full of hormones and antibiotics and have a1 casein which is super inflammatory or should you have more sheep or goat from grass-fed farms or should you have maybe a2 casing cows which are a little different so there's a lot of nuances but it's really simple and practical and gives people all the news to use yeah mark you're so amazing man thank you again for like taking the time to do this and and talking about you know and continuing your journey with with so many wonderful people you're you include such great talks on your podcast i enjoy it every time there's a new podcast from you <laughs> and thank um, you. I, 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 I honestly, with the work that you do and the things that you talk about, I just hope that, you know, that there was a, a sea of Mark Hyman's out there. That uh, I wish there was too. <laughs> yeah. I get a lot more sleep. <laughs> Look, you, you change the world and I appreciate, I know that there's some, at least if there's just one person out there right now that this makes a difference and they tell someone else and they help, mm -hmm. it's not even like, you're, I want to make it real clear here. This is, this is like, the elimination of terrible things in your life that you're eating because it's easier uh, to just eat a processed food or eat, a, eat, a, eat something fast food or eat something that's mm -hmm. high in canola oil or starch or whatever. It's, yeah. it's better to, to go on your life eating whole organic foods, know what works for you. And yeah. I can suggest this book, any people, The Pegan Diet, Dr. Mark Hyman, super important he also wrote uh food fix and um i believe 10 day detox and uh it's just an amazing dude thank you so much mark thank you thanks so much it's you're really great to be with you absolutely and, and we'll keep in touch you're awesome. okay all right all right thanks buddy all right thanks dude